don't be confused as I'll be just talking in general. I try to create a framework, a framework that will give just an overall uh, background on worm farming, not specifically what we do as ABC or as worm life organics, which is also a subsidiary of the group companies, but is still doing worm farming just in different categories. But I'll be explaining that as we as we go along. Uh, please excuse my voice. I'm still recovering uh, from a bad flu, uh, but at least now I can have a proper conversation without coughing much. Uh, personally, well, I, I I did my experience or my encounter with with the worms. I was working in Pretoria. Uh, this was the farm. It was two hectare farm where I was planting. Uh, as you can see, there was turmeric there. We were doing uh, peppers, tomatoes, uh, cabbages. Uh, so what fun, what fascinated me more about worms is when we were as a farmers. I'm not sure of our background here. Uh, but I assume that you're all in the agricultural space, even though we might be farmers or not. But uh, as a farmer on the ground, you always calculate the value of a square meter. So in general, if I'm planting the cabbages in, in a square meter, I'm looking at about a good revenue of, of 40 rand. If, it's, if I'm selling my cabbage 10 rand a head, and that means my square meter is giving me a 40 rand income. And then looking at turmeric, uh, I was able to get uh, about 400 rand within the square meter. But also now, if you compare that the cabbage is taking three months, turmeric is taking nine months, it's more like a human being. So that's why I had to scratch that one out. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you find worms, uh, I was quite fascinated when I looked that in, in South Africa, just South Africa alone, the price range for worms is ranging from 250 per kg to 1,600. And for me, that was like quite totally crazy because the, the, the worm industry is not regulated. So I, it, it really pushed me to do more research and to see that if the worms has so much potential, why they're not in the market. And maybe also just to give a little bit of background how I even got to be interested about worms. As you can see on my on my bottom right, I have peppers there. So we are growing those peppers in tunnels. We started with four tunnels, uh, and then our project our product was quite good because it was semi I wouldn't say organic, but it was semi organic because more like we were using the soil and we were using more of organic uh, inputs. But what happens is we distributed food lovers and other stores in Pretoria and until we got a client that said, I love your product, the shelf life is good. It's very uh, competitive in the market. I want you to produce peppers for me, the whole farm. So we had to convert, we had to build new tunnels from four tunnels to 25 tunnels. And my boss at that time said, I want to go organic fully. And when I was doing research, how we can get compost or worm compost at a time, I realized that the compost is the, be the best compost ever is vermicompost compost uh, in terms of, of the value and what it gives to the plants, what it gives to the soil as well. But what was tricky is that when I tried to buy or to outsource or to see where I can get the supply, the supply that I got was able only to supply me with one tunnel worth of compost, of vermicompost. Then I began to, to do more research. Why, if vermicompost is so powerful, why is it not available in the market? And then I realized that most farmers, commercial farmers that have been uh, doing worm farming, they do it for themselves, not for the market. And the market was not well developed at that time. <coughs> Uh, so this this is uh, Jamie. Jamie is in Pretoria. Uh, I think this is specifically in Glen Austin. He's one of is my mentor and my my inspiration. Jamie started his farm with just a bucket of worms, and like plus or minus twenty kg bucket, and you can imagine. And then now he owns I think it's more than twenty five worm beds. He's selling worms. He's selling compost. He's selling worm tea. And I've been learning from him and being inspired by by this humble gentleman. So this is how my journey started. When I, uh, the first training we did, it was 2018. Because you can see it's, it was domestic worm farming. So basically we're using whatever waste you can have uh, at home, but we are using the waste from the office. So the tea bags, 
uh, if we bring lunch or we bring even from home, whatever uh, kitchen waste will bring uh, the farm waste because we're the farm. So we'll use all that and to convert it to 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 um, compost and and then <coughs> excuse me and then from from that training we started to do experimental learning as you can see on the right that this that was my team at that time so we could take farm waste we process it there we put the worms and what was interesting there is that i only had one person managing that once a week and but the worms were doing wonders and from that learning then uh, the the lady I can see the late trials 2019. Uh, it was still in Gauteng. Then I came back in 2020 in, in, in case it's any reason from the company. I came back to start my company that I was talking about, APC, and we were renting a farm in Richmond. So we started to doing it undercover. Uh, we are using the wind rows there. And what you see, the cover by grass, the worms inside there. And then on my right, uh, we were in New Hanover. Uh, it's one of the farm that we have there. It's just a one hectare farm, but we're using half a hectare. So at that time is 2020 to 2021. We have developed trainings and we're using the, the farm in New Hanover as a demo site. People could come there, see how to produce worms, see how to use worms and produce compost and also worms. So basically it was our training center. And then that whole experience uh, led to 2022, of which that's where we are now. Uh, where we, me and myself and my partner, Kosnati Lamini or Emmanuel Lamini, we are both Kosnatis, but we prefer to use Emmanuel for him so that there's no confusion. So this this is the book that we are writing. Uh, it will be ready by the 21st of October. Uh, we had some glitches that it's already supposed to be out by now, but it's, it's almost done uh, with the editors at this point. And basically what we are addressing in that book, uh, you can see very technology for Africa, not only South Africa. When we realize that the market is, is huge, it's not only for South Africa, but for Africa. Because other countries like India, U uh, USA, Australia, they've been doing it big scale and big time. And they are, they are reaping the benefits of the industry. So the highlight of the book is focusing on the on the crisis that we have, being soil crisis, the waste and the economic crisis. But I won't be touching much on that one uh, because, yes, you need to buy the book to learn more what is happening in there. But just the highlights of the project. Now coming back to APC, uh, please forgive me some of the slides I'll just skip because I believe this platform that's where we're supposed to be engaging. So other slides, I included them for the purpose of when there are questions I can be able to answer with something that is visual and that is relevant. So basically what we are doing as a business case for APC is focusing on land degradation, food insecurity and the poor waste management. Our landfills in South Africa, we are in trouble. They are, they are getting full and food, food, food availability, uh, food availability and affordability. We are wasting a lot of food uh, that can really be of benefit to some families or communities that cannot really afford what we call organic food. But also coming back to the basics where people are taught gardening, where I can produce my own food that is better than the food that I buy uh, in stores and, and big markets uh, <clears throat> at a higher at a higher price. Land degradation, uh, well, the excessive use of certain fertilizers. Uh, this one I like so much because I have I have a cycle of farmers and we always used to debate. They say, Kosnati, if you want to do organic, uh, do gardening, not farming. Uh, forget that you're gonna make it in a commercial scale. In a commercial scale, uh, the same farmers today are coming and they are buying my product, which is organic, and they say there is a market there and they want to ship from there. So with the projects, basically we were. We train farmers to raise earthworms for breeding purposes. That is vermiculture. There is a difference between vermiculture and vermicomposting. The vermiculture focuses on worms being the product. Where else? Vermicomposting, the compost is the end product. So how you grow your worms or how you farm your worms is determined by what you want to achieve as, an, um, as, an, as a finished product. And then the project was designed for smallholder farmers. And, and other potential beneficiaries like the organizations, businesses, tertiary institutions, and the municipalities. 
And this was a three year project. We started 2020 and yes, we've had quite a lot of challenge online. Uh, because remember 2020 something else happened in South Africa and in the world that was a pandemic. We didn't feel the heat on the first year. Uh, second year towards the end, yeah, 2021, uh, we really started to feel and right now we're still uh, trying to solve some of the challenges that we encountered during the, the pandemic. But we are grateful that we are still able to be in business, uh, even though things didn't turn out the way we've planned it, we, we've planned it before. As you can see, our target for the projects in these three years was we wanted to raise one trillion worms. We're looking at 250 tons and the, the project was designed to be in three, in three phases. Uh, phase one starting in KwaZulu-Natal, phase two South Africa and phase three being Africa. Uh, phase one in 2020 went very well. We were able to meet our target and we exceeded our expectations. Uh, phase two, we, yeah, I won't even mention it, but even even now we're not able to reach 250 tons of worms. And not to mention Africa, we had to stop and not even engage. We already had a client in Swaziland and Malawi and Nigeria was, they wanted to come on board, but the thing is we can't even satisfy the market in KwaZulu Natal, let alone to think about Africa. <clears throat> What's incredible and amazing about worm farming is that it's one business, but you have three products. You have worms as your products and you have compost as your products. You have worm tea, which is more like your liquid fertilizer. That is also the product you get. This is what we have as our branded uh, products. You can see it's, it's branded worm life organics and both the compost as well. So what, what the difference between the companies, the worm life uh, is focuses on the outside markets. It focuses on providing the actual services within the worm farming, where else the APC, the focus was to train and raise growers on the ground. That will make sure that worm life has enough supply of worms. Because one of the things in the market, the moment you get there, they ask you, yes, we love your quality, but can you do the quantities? And for the past two years, that has been the question every buyer or potential buyer is asking. So we have to make sure that we build the muscles before we, we can secure good contracts. Uh, just as an overview of the benefits of the castings, the worms in, in general, it's more like we, we call it, it's a, it's a soil conditioner because they, they have a debate when you call it fertilizer, the worm castings, but basically they just feed your soil and your soil will feed your plants. <coughs> and then on the left, I was also wanted just to show the, this is the promotion we did for the fishing industry. Uh, which is more based in Cape Town because they pay a good price as compared to us here in cases N or Gauteng. So this is what you have as a product, the result. This is the farm in Zimkulu. It's one of the, the farmers we work with. He also came to our training and they were processing their own fertilizers. They've got a uh, lemon, they've got uh, about 300 dairy cows they're feeding. They've got your uh, what is this uh, grazing lens? So they were using worm tea. So here he was showing the lemon leaves before using worm, worm tea and then after. And he was so excited because uh, he's, he's cut like more than 50% of the cost that he, he was spending on, on fertilizer. So he's slowly wanting to move towards uh, being organic. These are the untapped markets within, within the industry, the machinery. We had to design the harvester. This is the trauma of the worm harvesters. And the little machine on the bottom right, that is the cocoon where we harvest the eggs for worms. And this is the space also that is, when when I say untouched, uh, because I mean, if we, we looked around, we couldn't get one. We had to design uh, the, the, the harvester for worms because the ones that are available are just sifters for compost and they harm the worms. So if there are any engineers here, uh, this is the space also that you can tap into. Looking at the market as a whole, just in general, the global compost market estimated to 9.2 billion by 2024. That's almost like close to just two years coming. And also the organic uh, food markets is estimated to be 380 billion in 2025. And if you have to, if the market, the organic food market is growing, is expected to grow that much, that means the inputs as well uh, are in parallel with that. 
Uh, this is just a highlight of the course that we provided. It was it's one th theory, it's one day uh, practicals, and then we do the business session. We believe that's what we need now is practicality. When they come to their feet in, in research and the academia, but I also believe that we have a lot of good uh, research papers that are, are collecting dust. And so what we did with Wim Farming, I went to those papers and then I I didn't do, I wouldn't say I did research, we said we, we implemented research and did our trial to see if things are working on the ground. And this is the result of those work that has been done uh, by people that uh, were doing the research on Wim Farming. Just some of the images, uh, the training that we did, and this is what is uh, still coming. We are partnering with Love Howick. Uh, it's an organization here in Howick in Peter Morris Beck. So we'll be having training with them and uh, CPK. So our focus going forward will be in partnership with organizations. We will be stopping to train individuals as from this year, uh, because this is year three. And our focus from now on is scaling up. As I did mention that we, we wanted to secure bigger markets we have trained over 280 growers up to up to far, even though not all of them are in production, uh, but some are doing very well. So we are more confident that now we can take big markets because of, of them being on the ground. And the beauty of, of worm farming for people who might be interested, you can do it indoors uh, using the worm beans like those, uh, outdoors, big scale commercial, and also, uh, looking at where we are with waste management, our landfills. This is what we did for our Sunduzi municipality to show them that how we can help uh, to hang in or to deal with the excessive waste that they have on the garden sites. <laughs> and then almost close to my end of my presentation, this is this is the Vermi box which we designed for I'll say intensive, uh, intensive and also mobile. Uh, worm farming because in this box you can farm almost 600 cages of worms and the, and 1,200 cages of worm, 1.2 ton of worms and there's quite a lot and that's the cost attached to that and when, with the returns and well that's crazy sometimes one of the things we debate about with the economist and the accountants is that it doesn't make sense on paper when you talk about the income from worms and which is also a negative because most people came to us because of seeing the returns and they assume that the worms would just do the magic and multiply themselves. As a result, they come to our training, they do the projects and then they see that the worms are not behaving the way they expected and they come back and complain. And when you look at the practices, we say no, worm, worm farming is still farming. Farming is responsibility. You need to maintain your farm, you need to manage your operation. If you don't do that, the worms will pack their bags and they will leave. And thank you very much. That will be the end. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Gossi, thank you very much. Um, that was very, very interesting and, um, and very informative. I like to believe that our colleagues here would have uh, comments, comments or question or questions or other. Um, and I think we're just gonna open for open the, the 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 house for that, and then see if there is someone who wants to to make comments or ask questions. Any hands, colleagues? I don't see any hand. I will ask my question while our colleagues are still um, thinking about their questions. <laughs> I'd like to believe. Um, 
and you 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 mentioned that uh, before you started your project you had to consult the literature and my question is um, did you have did you get enough literature from from uh, south africa uh, well, the literature was from was from other countries well, there's only one document that was quite useful uh, i wouldn't call it literature per se because it was done by red cross it was done by it was by done by red cross when they were just doing research to check how many worm farmers we have uh, because they wanted to use the worms to process human waste uh, and that that was the only one i mean apart from that at that time I, there was there was none and most almost everything that we used was from outside outside south africa even outside africa for that matter hmm. and you didn't have challenges in terms of um climatic conditions because they would be different uh no, no and uh, fortunate enough it's i think it's it comes like it's more like your any animal farming i would say uh, it depends on the species that you you breed in so it's more like what the, the kind of worms we work with, I would say they're more like Yonguni worms, if that makes sense. Yeah, they, they survive different conditions. Yeah, so yeah, it's, 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 it's what made them to be popular as well. Oh, OK. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, also, that means we, you, we don't have a um, lot of research that has been done locally. On, um, on on these worms? I wouldn't say even and lots. I, I would say we don't have. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's definitely no, we don't have. But to, to, I, 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 I would say, yes, from, from three years when I started and when, when now, even online, I would say there's a tremendous growth in the in in the, in the space but for businesses there are many businesses that have started and there are many people also looking for information i mean like the thing is the information that we get outside the countries are still still relevant information but the yeah when farming is growing with with speed in south africa oh okay all right so i mean if you look at the problems that you encountered are there any issues that you think they can be um or they can be resolved by maybe research at the moment well the very debatable one yes because other countries they've been researching uh, worms as for for the medical industry uh, and oh. yeah, and there have been claims. There have been claims that worms can even heal cancer. Uh, but it's, it's oh. still a sensitive topic. It's still a sensitive topic. Uh, I mean, even worms here. The, the farmer was showing you here, uh, which is me. The way he he been his he end of you he will drink it. It's wormsy for plants. But you say this is pure. This is healthy. Look, he even even drink it. It's like no, no way. And some people also drink it for, I think they'll say ulcers. Is it ulcers or for oh, the yeah. appendix, like that. Yeah, but it's something we don't recommend because, you know, the complication that comes with, 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 with that. Oh, OK. No, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Sadiki, I see you have your hand up. Yeah, yes, OK. Uh, first of all, I would like to say uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ngosi, for this wonderful presentation. And I can see that already I am feeling intimidated by this good presentation. I'm even afraid to ask questions because everything on the picture, it looks very, very, very perfect. So, however, my questions more especially i'm just asking these ones for for for, for my knowledge uh, for sure i just wanted to check uh, i i believe that uh, when you are in the process of uh, making uh, this uh, vermicompost 
and then those uh, three products that you spoke about that uh, uh, the end product or the combination of these you get worms you get the compost um, compost cast and then also you can get the compost tea so my interest here it was the uh, the issue of the nutritional content to you to say like uh, uh, after getting at the end product uh, do you put the nutritional content of the compost and also do you check the nutritional content of the compost tea and then because i'm just asking this to say uh, i believe that when you are making this compost you will be getting different sources from different uh, organic uh, materials uh, for for example maybe you will come with another load that comprises of different organic materials and then i believe that at the end product when you are doing the harvesting of the tea or uh, the end product of the compost cast where you make your compost uh, obviously maybe the nutritional content will not be the same because like uh, the sources are different as well uh, that is my question for now thank you mm. uh, Thank you, thank you very much, Kabazel. I know Gibong and Akul, and I'm glad to go to Brazil. And thank you for the compliment as well on the presentation. I really appreciate it. Uh, Kambe, maybe to start with, it's it's true that the project when we started, we we focused on worms. So the only thing we outsource from the growers are worms, and for that very reason, because as much as they do end up having their byproduct as compost but we cannot outsource their product because it's got different different material, of course. So the material we provide from our own farm only. Uh, and for example, currently what we've been using, we've been using uh, kekli manure and as our main ingredient. So we, when we would send it out, when we had a client from Cape Town that loved our products, but when they wanted to use it for their, they call it super, super soil. They wanted to use it for their super soil as as an ingredient, but they could not export it because it got that animal animal product. So apparently, according to the regulations, they don't want anything that's got animal product. So they came back to us, and they asked if we could do specifically for them a product that would not include an animal product. So that was quite a, a stretch because we had to uh, design a specific formula. Uh, of which we've been like currently busy with the dead trial uh, because the, the second one the worms died they were not happy with that material so once we're done we'll be able to just put that as a specific formula for that particular client and also what we've been doing uh, we do take our our products to the lab to analyze what's in there because we need to know even the clients sometimes need to know what's in there the challenge with the farmers especially the commercial old farmers, all they want is NPK. I mean, with worm farming, it's not about NPK, it's about the microbes, it's about the, the bacteria, it's about everything else, but not the NPA. Somehow, <coughs> excuse me, somehow there's a mystery there uh, that the scientists are still busy with. Uh, we, but we don't know what how it works. But with the what we what we've realized that even the NPK on this soil is able to be accessible by the plants once you apply worm compost because you can have the NPK on your soil, but to find out that the plant is not able to to take that, so that is the benefit also that comes. And also we 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 work on registering our products as a group two fertilizer. And now the challenge with that, once you register, you need to stick to the formula. So we had to take our time and not rush that process, uh, but we are almost closer now so that we can get into those markets that want to even maybe export, even the big stores that want to sell our products, they want us to be registered as a group, as a group to fertilize the product. I hope that will, will answer all your questions. Sir. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think uh, uh, I have answered and uh, thank you very much. And maybe one thing just to make a little bit of follow up, more especially on the worms that you get. Uh, 
I don't know. Um, do you have, uh, for instance, specific worms whereby you say, let's say, for instance, you are sourcing your worms from, maybe you are sourcing them from India, or maybe some of them you are sourcing them from Swaziland, or maybe some of them you are sourcing them from Nigeria. Have you ever made a, just a, some sort of a, 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 a trial to say like when I'm having this a, a specific worms, I think they perform much better. We are able to harvest a lot of a compost tea, like something like that. Uh, and also, I, I I think I saw you talking about the issues of um of uh, breeding. I'm just interested a little bit, but uh, I do not want to waste a lot of a time. Some of the questions, maybe we can take them outside of the presentation, but at least if you can highlight a little bit. Mm. OK, no, no, it's, it's, uh, I was trying to write down. Uh, OK, no, it's, 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 quite, it's quite amazing that all the ones that we were able to, to outsource were within the, the country. Uh, even though not KZN and such, we, we got our worms from Northwest as well as uh, Pretoria. And yeah, no, it's mainly Northwest and Pretoria. And the, the, the type of worms, we call them red wigglers. They are composting worms. So the worms are categorized more in into three as categories. You've got your worms that are more like they love to stay on the top or more like on the organic matter. Top, the the worms would love to stay in the middle, more like the middle of, of your, I wouldn't say topsoil, but, but those are burrowing worms that usually we see them when it's, when it's raining, they only then come out, out and then they just grow on top of the soil. And then you've got your worm that really love to burrow deep, deep on the, more like on the bottom layer of the soil. But the ones we deal with are the worms that you'll find on more like 20, 20 centimeters on top of the soil. They don't, they don't go down as such. So those are the worms we work with. And, <clears throat> and those are the worms I was talking about that they are more like young guni worms. They survive anywhere in, in, in the country. Uh, I mean, globally, the one in the list, because you can transport them all around and they'll just behave. <coughs> And the other part, okay, the other part is with your worms, you get this one, as we call them composting experience. Because if, it, if it's more like for domestic, we domesticate this kind of worms. So if you try to take different kinds, uh, you can keep them maybe today. And I think we have lost you. Uh, I can see that uh, we have lost him a little bit uh, because of network, but uh, let's hope he will be back now in a few minutes. Go see. like yeah we're losing him yeah it seems like we are losing him yeah very um, interesting as a, yeah um, this is i'm actually this is very interesting dr man very 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 interesting yeah because I'm, I'm already thinking of um maybe the research opportunities in um yeah new technology yeah yeah you know, yeah um yeah. and and trying in if you think of trying different ratios of the material that they are that they are use that they're eating yeah, you know, yeah. Um, but in a way looks like he's back because <laughs> are you back i was i was almost typing because i could hear you but it seems like you're not hearing me <laughs> all right yeah you, yeah you can okay. this way you have oh, left us right. 
Well, I think I think I'm 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 done the covers and unless calling at Tindang. I know. Uh, I think you have said uh, a lot, Ngosi. Some of the things I think I would uh, get your contacts. Uh, I will ask from Dr. Sandile to get your contacts because I think uh, what you were presenting is very, very, very interesting. And maybe at some point it will also help us on the side of research. You see now this uh, organic farming is growing. You have your liquid fertilizers, the biostimulants and whatever. So I'm also interested in, in, in your compost here as well. Thank you very much. I will hand it over to others. Oh, you're welcome, sir. Thank, thank you. Um, Pauline, I see your hand. <laughs> Mr. Robert Chat. <clears throat> not sure if he, he can hear me, but um, maybe in the meantime, I would like to ask this question. Like, uh, go see. Is there an expiry date for yes. the the WMT? Uh, well, not necessarily. Uh, but what what happens is, okay, maybe for WMT just to separate or to to, to define the, the we have what we call WMT as a compost extract. WMT is when we take the compost and then we we soak it more like a tea bag in a tea. We soak it and then we pump oxygen in. So, and some will put molasses to feed the microbes. And when we do that on the, we can even do it on your on the farm and making your own fertilizer. When we do that, that can only last. They encourage use it within 24 hours. And then we've got, you cannot store the, the more you store it, the more it loses value. Then you've got the, the WMC that is being brewed. They use a different process to, to process it. <clears throat> and the, so that's one can you can store it for, I'll say for a year. Even others, they stay for longer. But for me, uh, if I if it has to be stored for long, I'll recommend take it for 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 a, for a scan. Look at the look at look what what try to see, to see if the microbes are still alive there. Put it on the microscope, then taking a chance. There are people who are selling lictate as WMT, so people that don't know the difference will be scammed. They'll buy lictate thinking it's WMT. The lictate is basically what you get as, as a... So it's more like if you have a container and you have worms spreading in. So when you flush the soil with water, what will come out there? As, as liquid, that will be lictate. It's not WMT. So that's one is it's not recommended to to sell because we just we just don't know what is there. And if there's not much oxygen there, there can still be contamination. Even though on the ground uh, we've experienced good results with it because we we didn't throw away our lictate. We just take it, spray our trees, take it, put on the roots on on the root zone for the plants and they were doing pretty well. <coughs> I, I believe you answered. So it basically differs how it's processed. So the way it's processed will determine the expiry date. Uh, am I still audible? Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I was talking with my mic uh, muted. Uh, oh, okay. Mr. Rabotad. Yes, uh, thanks for the good talk, uh, Mr. Nkosi. So I, I wanted to check if whether I, uh, have you ever worked with you know, uh, farmers who, who are farming with grasses, like Lucerne, and other stuff like that. Uh, Lucerne, not, not or specific. Any, or, or any other grasses. 
Uh, no, not. I'm not sure the type of grass uh, because the, the farm way that we work with. I mean, I think he's using most is kukui. I don't know what else is there, uh, but I can double check that because I've got his results recorded down. Okay. But when I went to the farm, the one that I saw, I remember it was just kikuye. Okay. Yeah, but with the research, there, there is a lot of research on different grasses. And like, for example, there is a farm that is, is in Australia. His, his farm is, uh, his business is number three in the world when it's come to worm farming. And he's, he's making his own worm tea. And he's got different trials and different grasses. And I think even Lucena is there, but it's not a local, it's not a local farm. I don't work with him directly, but I know his work and is 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 even having more like data packs for farmers. He will send them a package of 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 WMT, WM compost and guide them or give consultation of how to apply and how to use it and on, on more like extension services, but that are spe specific to WM farming. Okay, no, th thanks. So do you have any branch in Pumalang or are you planning on having one in future? Well, if you can invite me, say I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, honestly, you know, there, there is there is an organization to work with. They are in Pumalanga. I'm just uh, I can't remember where in Pumalanga, but what what they've been busy. Actually, I'm coming. I'll be coming in November. We'll be launching their site as a base farm. They've approached a mining companies because you know mining companies are are required by law to to revive the soil after they've done all the damage on. The, on the soil. So worm farming is one of the, the, the projects we wanted to, to, to implement there. They call it Vemi, Vemi radi <coughs> radiation. So where we, we restore, we use the worm processes and the worm farming processes to restore the soil that has been damaged. So that's the projects we are busy with in Pumalang. It also reminds me what we just talked about here with this presentation was only worm, uh, vermiculture and vermicomposting much. There's still a vermifiltration uh, for water treatment, and there's no research in South Africa on that. And there's still vermiremediation that I'm talking about to restore the soil, to restore life back to the soil, of which mining companies uh, are looking for that. There's no research in South Africa. And there's still vermifeeds where, like the, the fishing industry, they use the worms as an alternative to the to the uh, to the fish meal, so they will use the vermi meal using the worms. Even the poultry industry, they're looking into exploring that using the worms as as an alternative protein. So when when I say opportunities are vast, there is there's quite plenty. And practically, as much as we're trying to grab as much as we can, we realize we just need to to open up opportunities and create awareness because when there are many players, it makes things much easier even to for, for growth or for expansion. OK, th thanks very much. I, with the hope that you'll you'll also invite us when you visit the province in, in November. No, no, definitely say no. I will miss them. And then I would really love to meet you guys there. OK, thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Shane. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Nati, for a wonderful talk. Uh, I just wanted to ask, like, if you ever have worked with a smallholder farmers or maybe emerging farmers, I just want to check if maybe what are the remarks that they've given to you, they've given you after they've used your product? Did they manage to use it properly or maybe did they get the high yield or what happened? Because mostly in Pumalanga, we are working with we're trying to uh, work with small farmers and, and emerging farmers to make them to to have a better yield using different products. So I just want to check from your side. Thank, thank you very much, ma'am, for for that question. Uh, in, interesting enough, we we are currently doing doing a pilot with with the with the cane growers uh, projects. So as the sugar cane industry has been shaken, they wanted an alternative to to shift their 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 growers or give them an alternative for for income. So they approached us and we 
we enroll them as one of our of our web crawlers, but we just started with two. So we trained them and we came just to see what was happening on their farms. So what happens because we only buy the worms, so they always have the access, the, the byproduct of the worm leak chain I was talking about and the worm compost. So what they did, they took the compost, they applied it to their gardens and even to the sugar cane. So when we last time we were having a meeting uh, with, with their with their management, they were boasting about that. Just two weeks after applying this product, mind you, it's not it's not it's not the, our product. It's not a product that went to lab. It's the product that's it's their byproduct from from their own operation. But they could see visible results. That the growth is it is it's just there, and you could tell the difference where the, the 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 vermi product was applied and where it was not on the sugar cane on their spinach i can't remember what else they were planting so we've been getting those kind of good good feedback and also from our from our clients i wouldn't call them smallholder as such but maybe i'll call them gardeners rather but in general with the with the worm uh, the vermi products what we estimate is if you've not been using them when you apply them we estimate at least 20% growth. So no matter whether you're doing trees or you're doing uh, veggies, but the, the growth of which start with the growth of the leaves and then the leaves will determine even the fruits that we have and the rest. So we, we do have good feedback, uh, but not only from small Honda farmers, but in general from all the people that have used our products. Even so, not only our products, uh, just to be general, that have used worm compost or, or worm tea, as opposed to, of course, synthetic fertilizers. I trust your answer, Amy. Yes, thank you very much. I'm answered, uh, but some other question, can I also take it out from uh, this uh, platform? Maybe we can talk after. Thank you. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know how much time we have here, uh, but it's, uh, the, the, the facilitator can guide us, but yeah, any any questions are welcome even after. I would love to engage further. Um, Shane, maybe you can ask if you want to. <laughs> no, it's fine. It was just on terms of research purposes, but I think it's fine. We'll take it out from this platform. Oh, OK. All right. OK. No, thank you. Um, Another question, you have got a lot of questions. <laughs> um, the rates that the, the rates that you are using, um, do you have a standard rate for um, the, I mean, for all for different crops, or maybe the rate that you apply that you're using depends on the nutrient levels in this way? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it depends one on the crop, the type of crop we are growing. We do have something like that is standard, like a range in terms of compost. But also, uh, it, 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 the soil, we, we not necessarily need the analysis, but it helps to, to know do you have the dark soils, brown soils, black soils, or red soils. And also looking on the more like clay content. Uh, oh, okay. Then we can do the recommendations because what we did, we because also of the cost of the, of the vermi compost. In general, uh, the price you pay for your normal organic compost, you'll pay seven times more for any compost. So now you can imagine in terms of your input cost that if you'd be buying 100% vermi compost and uh, maybe to grow spinach, that might not be cost effective. So what we did, we, we separated our, 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 our products. We introduced the vermi compost 25% castings. And then we have 100%. So what for people who are doing leafy crops and based also on our trials and experience, because that's where you just need this leafy crop, there are no fruits. And also when you're not getting much of the returns on those. So it makes sense not to, because no matter how much you can apply the, the, the castings or the vermicompost, your spinach cannot grow to be the size of the tree in a sense. So you are limited there. So we will, we will recommend 25% castings, but for somebody who's growing like 
the high value crops like your pepper, your tomatoes and something like that. So we we'll recommend the hundreds. At least you know that your returns will be visible and you'll be able to get <coughs> uh, something uh, like value, your return, your values will be fucking on the ground. Okay. So. All right. And then are you doing any dilutions on your, um, I mean, even if it's it's a leachate or it's a WMT, uh, do you dilute it with water or? Oh yes, WMT. E e e we use one 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 is to four, so one liter will go to four liters of water. And but also with that as well, if you're doing something like your lettuce, because lettuce is sensitive, so you recommend just use one liter is to eight. So consultation is is also very key. Uh, I mean, if you want to really get the optimum results, because also one of the one of the research that was done actually by Rob in in Cedar, I don't know if you you know, I think you know him, uh, uh, Tim Cole. He, one of the clients uh, was the, well, it was one of it's one of the people the people that we are working with, and they were doing research with Rob. So the client came back complaining, saying, I bought your products and then my plant died. It was like growing roses. And it, they were very curious that because the, the, the castings are not harmful, you can apply as much as you want. You want you want overdose your plants. So we realized because of the the, the, the worm compost has the ability to, to hold, to retain moisture or water. So they basically they they, they, they roots ground. So that's what the reason. It's something good, but because they were using pot plants, there was not enough drainage for the roots to breathe because the castings were holding water. So you see, it's a good, it's a good, <laughs> it's a good quality, but it was working against the client because they were not taught how to use the product. Oh yeah, I see. I see. All right. Oh, thank you. Um, is there any other question? Shane, is that your your old hand? Oh. Okay. Yes, it was. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Mr. Sadiki, I see your hand. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, maybe the last one, because uh, you know the more when people are asking questions and then uh, something just get triggered in your mind and then you feel like you want to talk more. So I'm just interested in the part, uh, more, more especially in the uh, situation where you are applying, more especially on the application method. So this product of the compost, uh, compost tea or your tea, vermicompost tea, uh, for your clients, do they normally apply on the on the plant leaves or they apply on the soil or both? And uh, according to what you have uh, experienced in most cases, the effectiveness, uh, what was the results if you have uh, checked that one? Oh, thank you, thank you, sir. Well, for what we recommend, uh, not being a salesperson, like there's a client that came to us asking us for a quote. He wanted 10,000 liters of OMT and a compost that can cover 100 hectares. And that was the recommend. He used the same skill that he got from a different company. So my, my recommendation, once you buy compost, compost because it's, it's recommended you, you you put it before planting or as during planting the same compost one bag of of 25 cages of compost can give you enough when to cover a hectare so so for me i make more money if i sell you mt but for you as a farmer you, you save a lot of money if you process your own OMT and it's something that is very easy. It just take you 24 hours and you have the best products and you get 
almost similar results than when I sell you the product. And so what we do if the client comes to consult with us, we give them it's basically it's more like a simple uh, production plan. That's if you're going to be using this product, you'll apply it when you plant and then you top dress maybe after two weeks and then from then you'll be using the spray, the OMT. Like the farm that I was working with that I was showing you the, the results. He he used the worm castings just on the root zone. But then what they did, they spray the leaves. But also spraying the leaves helps in terms of your MT works as a pesticide because it makes your leaves to be stronger. And also the, 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 the pest, they don't like the smell of, of, of the OMT. So you get more like your two in one. It's your fertilizer, but your pesticides as well. So it's, 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 it's a win-win. It's recommended to use them in parallel or in conjunction. All right, John, thank you very much. I think I am answered 100%. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Doctor, are you still around? Doctor Mtimkulu? Uh, doc, maybe he's muted. Yeah, he might be muted or maybe he's having uh, network challenges. So can I, can I talk then? <laughs> yeah, take the floor, Mr. Robert. Okay, I wanted to to check. Maybe it's a, it's a bit different this one because I once watched snail farming in one of the television uh, programs. So I wonder how how close is uh, when farming with snail farming? Uh, well, I don't have much knowledge about snail farming, but I do know that they they both love the same food. So they're the kind of food you'll, you'll feed your snails, the, the worms also, they, they flourish when they eat that. And yeah, no, I, 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 the process and how it differs on the ground, no, I'll be lying. I don't, I don't have, I don't have any insight on that. But I do know that those are the only industries that are opening up, snail farming, worm farming, and also what they use in the maggots that they use because it's all, it's all proteins there. Now they're using maggots to, to feed the, the chickens and seemingly it's more cost effective uh, and then the current or the, the normal feed that we buy from uh, these this big organizations. Okay. No, th thanks very much. Thank, thank you, sir. <laughs> So my, my question while we wait for Dovatella is, I, I hope yeah. we have worm farmers here and start at home. I mean, for my, I, I advocate for, for waste management. You know, the amount of waste we draw away as families, just as, as a household, the tea bags, the eggshells, the kitchen, the kitchen straps. Uh, you just put those things in the bucket and you put worms. Worms will give you magic. Instead of taking these things to the landfills, you take it, you put it to your garden. You take it, you put it to your your crops, your roses, your trees. You'd be amazed of, of you just fall in love with the worms. And you always warn people that be careful when you come for worm, uh, worm farming training. Uh, worms are very addictive. You just fall in love with them. So please, uh, I'm inviting you. Just that's more. Once you start, you'll see you won't stop and you'll make impact. This this is a need in Africa.
it, it doesn't seem like I'm getting any feedback there. I don't know if, if we, we, only, we only have people who want to, to do research. No one wants to be the crown and to get dirty. <laughs> Thank you, we'll try. <laughs> May we will try. That That's why I was saying uh, your presentation was a uh, 110 or somewhere above so you can see that uh, most of the audience it seems like they are intimidated but hopefully with time they will adjust and then start to interact because i think this is very 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 interesting and we are all in agriculture mm. oh, that's yeah awesome. yeah that's great i mean if, if you in agriculture that's even even much much better yeah 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 so i don't know i i, I once had uh, some people saying like when you are taking these uh, garbages uh, onion it's not uh, that much of a preference to these uh, worms is it true or it's just a myth oh yes no no it is true uh, mm -hmm. something like the onions uh, even meat we don't recommend uh, as well mm -hmm. as anything that is acidic lemon oranges and stuff but also there is a process to tame all that so we we what we do we we will take it and we ferment it so once it's fermented you can mm. then put on the worms okay and yeah, then so if, for for for, for for the issue of uh, maintaining the moisture per se like uh, maybe in your when you are busy uh, uh, in the process of maintaining your your your, your vermicompost, like in terms of mo uh, moisturing, like uh, do you put most moisture or not, or like how? Because like I'm saying that on the perspective of checking the issues of uh, anaerobic conditions, you see that yes. do you have those yeah those kind of things. Mm. No, no, 100%, because I remember the worms, they, 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 they breed through their skin. So yeah. the moment your, your medium or wherever they stay, there's not enough oxygen, whether it's too much water that is stagnant, or even, for example, if you put meat or greasy stuff, because that's more like it suffocates their environment. So you want to make sure that uh, you keep the, the, the flow of oxygen available there. But in terms of the moist level, the worms they can survive, I mean, even 80% of moisture is still good for them. As long as okay. that water there or that muddy material, as long as it's oxygenated and there's enough space for the water to breathe, that's okay. Yeah, right, right, right. No, that's, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Yeah, I'm not, um, I, 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 I don't know because like um, I think Dr. E is away and I'm not sure if he's coming. Did we get something on the message? Maybe he's trying to type to tell us something, but because I can see that uh, I think now people on the audience now, they might be ready to okay. leave us because of time. Okay, hopefully he's All right. Back. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry, colleagues. I had a problem with the network. Uh, this thing kicked me out. Um, All right. Yes, I think I missed out on some of the things, but uh, colleagues, I think um, we might want to um, stop here for tonight. I can see that uh, we still want to continue with the conversation. And I also still have uh, a few questions that I would like to ask, but I think we're going to talk uh, we'll see, uh, sometime yes. <laughs> in the near future. Um, sure. Yeah, so thank you. Yes. So thank you very much, uh, Ngosi. Thank you. Thank you. Um, actually, yes. we've been wanting to have you here um, yes. from last year. <laughs> actually, yeah. I wanted to, to, to bring you here last year, but I'm glad that you I mean, eventually you're here and um, you spoke to us and um, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, colleagues. You're welcome, sir. Thank, thank you. It's, it's uh, been an honor to be part of this. Thank you. Um, colleagues, thank you very much for staying until now and thank you for the conversation that we heard because of uh, the questions you asked and uh, the comments you made. Thank you so much. Um, I trust that you, I mean, we all learned something 
Um, yeah, so our next webinar will be on um, in two weeks time, it will be 12th October. All right, so have a good evening, colleagues. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks very bye. much. Bye. Thank you very much. Cheers. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.